Alright guys, welcome back. So in this video I'm going to take a slight break from the beginner series to look at another simple transition effect that you can put into your game. The transitions were something highly requested by my Patreon supporters. Um, I did I did one video on it, but I wanted to do a few just to demonstrate some of the different sort of simple effects you can easily create now that the whole transition stuff that was used to be built into Game Maker is now obsolete. Those of you who caught my Ludum Dari game, the Death Stream over the weekend, uh, will remember this game, a gun that shoots bees that I made. In this game, I had this little neat transition Whoa. where you press uh, the R key, and it does this little black sliding, uh, sliding like fade transition. Okay, and I'm just going to basically show you how to recreate that in your own game. So my basic setup here is really simple and straightforward. I have two rooms, one called RM underscore one, and one called RM underscore two. I've given this one a different color background just so that we know when the transition is working. Um, that's all I have at the moment. Both room speeds are set to 60, just to make everything smooth. And so you'll, if you do the same thing, you'll end up with sort of similar timings to what I do, and so on and so forth. And the same sort of numbers will work properly. So what we're going to do to create this uh, fade effect is we're going to have a script that we can call whenever we want the uh, whenever we want the um, the transition to happen, and all that script is going to do is it's going to create um, an object which will handle all of the actual transition effect, and that object will then be given a target room which will allow you to call the script and send the game from one room to any other room you want. Um, just in the script itself by just passing along that variable to the object. Um, the object itself is going to handle all the actual fade stuff. But the first thing we need to do is make this script. So in scripts I'm going to right click and hit create script. I'm going to call it ser underscore side fade. I don't know if, if technically this is a fade um, but side fade was the word I came up with so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to work with for now. Um, in here I'm just going to establish a variable using var fade semicolon. The reason I'm using var is because like this isn't um, a local variable I need to establish in the object or whatever it is that actually calls it, it's just temporary. So I'm using var, it gets thrown away when the script is finished. Uh, fade is going to be equal to instance underscore create zero zero and we haven't made this object yet but it will be obj underscore side fade just the same word again but with obj instead of scr okay it won't turn red yet because we haven't made that object yet but it, it will later um, doesn't matter where you create it coordinates wise so i just wrote zero zero and by setting fade to equal that we get the instance id of that object passed into this fade variable and which means we can then use that and say fade dot goal equals argument zero. Now, um, what this does, what writing fade dot goal does, it means we're creating a, um, a creating or changing a variable inside of the object that is fade, which is the ID of the um, the object we've just created. So we just created this object and we're setting a variable inside that object that we just made. Okay, argument zero is the first argument you pass along to a script whenever you call the script. So when we call the script we'll be writing something like scr underscore side fade and as you call it inside the script itself although that would be very dangerous to do open a bracket and you provide the first argument in the bracket so I would say something like rm underscore 2 if I wanted to go to room 2 close bracket semicolon and that's how we're going to be using the script and the first thing you put in this bracket here is argument 0 if you have, um, you can do multi up to like, I think it's like 15, like argument 1, argument 2, argument 3, and so on and so forth. And you call those as appropriate in the script. So if I wanted another argument, I would call it there by putting another comment. But we just need the one argument. Okay. But we obviously don't want to actually call the script inside the script itself. That would be a bad idea. Um, and that's it. That's all you actually need for the script. Okay, so we just made a temporary variable, assigned that temporary variable to be um, a new instance of this object that we're going to make. And in that object, we give it um, a goal variable, which will be the room that we're going to transition to. Okay, so go ahead and close that. The next thing we want to do is create um, the actual object that's going to move us from one room to the next. So right click an object, go to create object, tick persistent for this object because it needs to continue to exist from one room to the other because it, we're going to bring in the black from the side, it's going to go all the way across and then when it's all the way across we're going to move from one room to the next while well, like it's concealed by the blackness and then the black's going to fade from the side 
all the way back across again. So it's transitioning from left to right. Okay. And so in order for that to happen, this object needs to be persistent because it needs to carry over from one room to the next. If it didn't, it would just like fade from the left all the way to then, and then the black would instantly become the next room, which isn't what we want. Anyway, name this object obj underscore side fade. Again, I'm not sure it's the best name, but we'll work with it. And add the create event. In the create event, we're just going to establish three variables. We're going to initialize them all to zero. First one is going to be right equals zero. The next one is going to be left equals zero. And the last one is going to be stage two equals zero. So we're going to do this in two stages, and that's the variable we're going to use to control that. We'll set it to one when we're on stage two. Stage one is fading the black from left all the way to right, covering the screen in blackness. And then stage two is bringing the black back from left to right to reveal the next room that we're in. And right and left are the variables we're going to use to control how far right or how far left we draw the big black rectangle over the room. Okay, so the only other event we need in here is the draw event, so go ahead and add the draw event. Drag in execute code as always. And this is the code we need. So the first thing I'm going to do is set our draw color to black. With that line, draw set color black. And then I'm going to establish um, four variables. I'm going to type var, and you can establish multiple variables using var just by separating them with commas. So I'm going to do x1, x2, y1, and y2. And these are the variables we're going to use to draw a big rectangle, okay? So I'm going to set them up one by one. x1 equals, uh, x1 is going to be um, the left coordinate of the rectangle, which is going to be our view x view, so wherever our camera currently is at the moment, and if you're using multiple cameras you might want to set which specific view using square brackets, but by putting no brackets we're just using the, the current default view. Um, and we're going to add left to that, okay, uh, which is the variable that we're going to use to move the rectangle around. So by default it's just the far left of the screen, but it's plus left when we want to actually bring it across, which we won't do right away. At the moment, it's just zero. So for now, that's just view x view, so the left coordinate of wherever our view is. x2, we view underscore x view plus right, okay, which is going to determine the right hand side of our um, rectangle. That's what x2 is going to be, which at the moment is going to equal exactly the same as uh, x1. We're just because we're not drawing anything, so both coordinates are from the left. Like so, it's just like a a line straight down, and then it'll be. It'll fill out uh, to the right to become a rectangle. Uh, y1 is going to equal view underscore y view, meaning that's the top of the rectangle. Okay, it's the topmost coordinate of our view, so that's the top of the rectangle. And y2 will always equal view underscore y view plus view underscore h view. H view means the height of the view, so from the top coordinate of our view plus the total height of the view means the bottom of the view, yeah? So Y1 is the top, Y2 is the bottom, right? From the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. The only ones that actually need to change are the ones that are scrolling from side to side. So that's X1 and X2, so the left and the, the right coordinates. Um, and then as time goes on, because draw the draw step works very much like the step event in which it like um, it triggers every single frame no matter what. So here I'm going to write right plus equals 15. Okay, and that means that uh, this coordinate is going to, x2 here, is going to start off as just view x view uh, plus 0, and then every frame is going to get 15 added to it. So the right hand side of our rectangle is just going to get 15 bigger every single frame. Okay. And uh, we don't even need to stop that, uh, keep getting bigger, because if that goes off the far right of our screen, um, we don't see anything happening off the far right of our screen, so if that keeps getting bigger, it's, it's not actually a problem. Left, we're going to do a similar sort of thing, I'm going to plus equal, and then just in brackets, uh, 15 multiplied by stage 2. In fact, you don't even need to put that in brackets, I don't know why I did. Semicolon. Okay. Uh, stage 2, as you know at the moment, is 0, so at the moment 
every frame we're just multiplying 15 by 0, which is obviously 0, and we're adding that number, 0, to left, so left is just getting added 0 to it every frame. So this line currently is doing nothing. But when we turn stage two, when we turn stage two to equal one, we'll be adding fifteen to left every single frame, which will start to move our second x coordinate, which is the left hand side of our rectangle. And that's when we've moved room, and we want to bring the rectangle back from one side to the other. Okay. So having done all that, we can then say draw underscore rectangle turns yellow x one x two. Uh, no, sorry, x1, y1, x2, y2. And it's not an outline, it's a filled rectangle, so 0 at the end there. Then, um, all we need to do is set up the condition for stage 2 becoming um, stage two becoming 1 from 0 and actually moving from one room to the next. When do we want to do that? We want to do that when the rectangle has gotten bigger than the... Uh, the, the width of the view. So if right, this is starting at zero and being having had 15 added to every single frame, it will eventually be bigger than view underscore w view, which is the width of our view. And I'm going to say plus 50. So right has to be bigger than our camera width plus about 50. Just an arbitrary buffer on the end, just so that it doesn't instantly move a room the moment the black fin like uh, like finishes out just so there's a tiny like delay of like three frames or so it becomes black and then like three frames later we change room and start bringing in the camera from the left okay uh, close bracket and then we want to say and by putting two ampersand symbols here which means that this condition and another condition have to be true for this if statement to work the other condition is going to be just if not stage 2, because we won't want to do this continuously. Okay, So as long as stage 2 is currently 0, which it is, we started off at 0, um, not stage 2 will uh, equal true. Okay. So assuming... That's basically to make sure that we don't do this more than once, okay? Because otherwise, like, right is increased by 15 every time, so the moment this goes over that, that would be true, and otherwise, like, we would loop this stuff in here, which would be bad. Because what we're going to do in here is say, room, let's go, go to, goal. Goal being the variable we established earlier on in our script. When, our, when we actually created this object, we gave it a goal, a room we want to go to. And obviously, uh, if it weren't for this here, uh, this would loop a million times. But we can now just say stage 2 equals 1, so that the moment this if statement, uh, the moment this combined thing returns true, and we come into this if statement, we set stage 2 to equal 1, and then because that's no longer true anymore, this will never happen again. Okay, so we've, right has moved, uh, all the way past uh, the right hand side of our uh, screen. Stage 2 is equal 1 and we've moved from one room to the next but we still have a giant black rectangle covering the screen. But because stage 2 equals 1 left will start to get 15 added to it every single frame so the, uh, the rectangle will now move from the left hand side uh, and shrink towards the right. But we, since we don't want the object to just keep doing that forever we're just going to say if left is greater than view underscore w view I'll add the buffer again then just destroy this object just to kind of finish off the procedure and just so we don't have persistent objects just lying around doing nothing because that would be bad for the memory of our game okay so go ahead and click ok save changes to that so this object will work perfectly now um, all I need to do is in room 1, our first room up here, I'm going to go into the creation code and I'm just going to call that script that we set up earlier. So scr underscore side fade. Uh, open bracket, the room we want to go to is uh, rm underscore 2. You can also use this to restart the room, which is what I did in my Ludum Dari game, but just by targeting uh, the room that you're in. Like if I did that, just room, then it would target the room you're currently in and restart the room. So you can just use it as you would use a uh, room underscore go to, basically. I'm um, underscore two. Now if I run that, 
Bring those up and fades from the grey room to the blue room, from one side to the other. I'll run that again, just so you can see. Fades in from that side, fades back in from the other, and bleeds you in the next room. Simple as that. I will cover uh, a few other different types of transition effects, but I'm just you know, starting with simple, nice little effects that look good, that are easy to produce. And uh, my next video, probably again this week, um, trying to catch up a bit, will probably be another video in the beginner series. Okay, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys next time.